Well, we are uh, incredibly blessed to live on a campus with lots and lots of trees. Whenever I ask people, um, you know, why they come to Virginia Tech, they say the campus is absolutely beautiful. We're surrounded by these gorgeous trees. Uh, we have an opportunity to learn lots more about trees uh, today with our guest speaker. Um, with this presentation entitled, Foe from Trees, um, Daniel has had extensive experience with the tree industry. He started his own business um, cutting and trimming trees when he was in high school, making lots of that moolah, and is also an agriculture science major here at Virginia Tech, furthering his education in regards to trees. Uh, we have been friends for quite some time. We go back uh, six, seven years, something like that. Um, he is a cool, cool dude uh, that has been skydiving, who was a state officer with the Virginia FFA Association, uh, and also has like six girlfriends or something like that. So, um, without further ado, please join me in welcoming to the stage for his presentation entitled, Four Lessons Learned from Trees, Mr. Daniel Black. Why? Okay, so as um, Mr. Walsh showed us, or explained very well, we're going to learn about four lessons that trees can teach us, or four things that trees have taught me, I guess you could say. So like, what comes to mind when we think of uh, trees teaching us something? We can get deep here. Trees. Patient. Patient. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Keep going. I'm here two more. Life. Life. Regeneration. Regeneration. Okay, perfect. So, these are the four lessons trees have taught me throughout my lifetime, okay? Number one, and we'll go over all of them in retail, but the first one, safety. Never stop growing is the second. Never working alone is the third when you work with trees. And then fourth, getting lumber to where it needs to be. And these are all really concise, but like these are the objectives we'll be covering throughout the entire uh, slideshow. So, the first one, safety brings you home. So, in any kind of like industrial workplace, safety is important. And the reason why I put safety brings you home is because efficiency does not bring you home. Making the most money does not bring you home. Being safe on the job site is what brings you home. So, this is like a representation of, you know, like some companies on a daily basis, you go out on the job and you think like, if I were, if I were working for a landscaping company, you'd say, I'm going to mow as many yards as possible to make the most money as possible. And that's going to be my end goal at the end of the day or at the end of this week. And like, what really ensures that everything works out smoothly is to build your business around being safe as the main goal and then accomplishing what you started it to will be a secondary goal. Like, the other thing is to, I'll tell a story about this. So I put a rake up there because that has to do with the story. So when I go to people's houses, I have my pickup truck and my chipper. Okay? And when you chip stuff up, like you have that big chute and you like put, stuff, put material in there and you get leaves and stuff all over the ground. You don't want to leave people's yard looking all trashy. So I keep these rakes with me. And so I clean up the yard, you know, keep it looking snazzy whenever I leave. And one day, the rakes don't fit in the cab of the truck, obviously, so you put them in the bed. And then one day, I was working, and I forgot to take the rakes out of the truck before I started. So like I shot chips in there. Like three-fourths of a pickup truck loaded chips. And so like I'm getting done at this job site and I'm like I'm sitting there and I was like, oh shoot, I forgot to get the rake out of the back of the truck. And like I got down in the back of the bed and like I saw like that much at the end of the handle. It was like that moment on Castaway where he's like, oh my gosh. Well like same sort of thing. And so I saw that little piece of the handle and like so to picture this, I'm standing on the back of the pickup truck, like, and I've dug down and the tailgate's like right here behind me, it's like at this height right here, and I'm pulling on this rake, like trying to get it out. And like when I pull up, I hear it snap. And I'm like, oh great, like not stuck back there. But like it was that point where it didn't like fully snap off, it was just kind of there. So I was like, I got this. Better idea. So instead of pulling up on the rake, I'll just pull out on the rake, right? Okay? So like I get this thing, I like pull on as hard as I can, and like it goes, and like the handle pops out. And like I fell out of the back of the truck backwards. And so like tailgate's right here, so I fell over the back of the tailgate, and the chipper was right here, so like I landed on the tongue of the chipper, 
I got this big gash in my back, and then there's these aluminum rails that run along the bed, and like I try to catch myself on the way down, and like it like cut me the whole way on my arm, and then really gross back. I was wearing gloves, and it was super hot, and I was sweaty, and I cut my palm because my skin was like all soft, like when you get in the swimming pool. Anyway, it was really nasty, and I like have a scar from it now because I was dumb and I didn't think. So like, yeah, it's kind of in the moment you're like, oh darn, or like, it it's not worth it at the end of the day. Like, it, it's obviously like I'm fine now, but like, it took me out of commission for like three or four days being able to do anything. My hand was all bandaged up, and that kind of represents like. Money will not bring you home. Safety will bring you home at the end of the day, or back to your family. Um, second thing, I'm gonna get a move on on this, but like, second thing is never stop growing. And obviously, that's kind of like a reference to trees, like cause trees grow. But one of the reasons I put that is because when I was younger, I thought the idea of starting a firewood business with an axe was like fascinating. Like you can get an axe for like 12, 20 bucks, or splitting them all, and you could start splitting firewood like for other people or for yourself and then sell firewood and then with the money you make from that you could buy like a chainsaw with the money you make from that you could buy a trailer or a pickup truck and like it just fascinates me that sometimes in business we can start off with something that costs like two digits and grow to something that's you know fifteen or twenty thousand dollars or like a lot um, and so that's one of the things like tree work kind of taught me as a whole was like in the business world you got to keep asking yourself what am I going to do to make this better? Like, what can I have done on this job site to have been better? What could I do um, as a business person to be better? How can I make my interaction with customers better? And, like, that also applies to just your growth as a person as a whole. Like, you can ask yourself, how can I be a better student? Or how can I be a better, you know, employee for wherever you work? And so that's one of the things, like, owning your business and teach, owning your own business teaches you is, like, how to grow things and how to grow trees and also like how to grow yourself. Um, the third lesson, never working alone. So in any kind of like construction or forestry industry, like it's a really bad idea to work alone. And it's just like going hunting without a cell phone. Like what if you fall while you're hunting or you trip while you're hunting or you have a heart attack while you're hunting because you're pulling, like, pulling a deer out of the woods and you're just done right there because you chose not to take a cell phone. Well, it's kind of the same philosophy like when you're working in a construction or forestry related industry, like you have to work alone. And I really got the sort of the stick of this one time. I was at this people's house and they had this giant cherry tree that I took down for. And it was this huge cherry log and they're worth some cash if you keep them in one piece. So obviously they like sawing it up into smaller pieces and then taking it to my house is pointless. So I had this log that was like, it was like 36 inches in diameter or so at the butt end. And it was 16 or 17 feet long. It was it was really long, and I wanted to put it in the bed of my, not in the bed of my pickup, on this trailer I had. So what I did was, I took, I thought, well, I don't need any equipment to do this. I'm just going to use, like, human ingenuity and just my muscles, which aren't much. And I took this car jack, and I, like, jacked one end of the log up, like, 18 inches off the ground. And then I hooked a, a winch to it, a come-along. Like, everybody know what a come-along is? Yeah. So, you know what a come-along is recently? Okay, it's like a ratcheting thing. It's not like a ratchet strap. Okay. Only it has a winch cable instead of a strap. Um, and I hooked that come along to one end of the log that was jacked up and like used it to kind of like pull the log on the trailer. And like the log was so heavy that the log was sitting there and the truck was going like towards the log. <laughs> like, and I spent like three hours doing it. I forgot to eat before I went to the job site to do, so I was like in that stage of hangriness where you're hungry and you're lightheaded and everything's making you mad. Well, like three hours after doing this, I get this log like six feet on the trailer. And like I said, it was a 17 foot long, 16, 17 foot long log. And this guy comes out of the house, the homeowner I'm working for, he's like, hey, I got my tractor over there. You want me to use it? And I'm like, yes. And like, we loaded three or four other ones up that had been sitting there in like 45 minutes. And it's just one of those scenarios, like for one, if I would have taken someone else, it would have been a lot easier. And two, if you ask for help, like things go a lot easier. Like. And that also relates to like life too. There's a lot of school, you know, school projects or like picking classes or like picking your major. Like there's just so many places in life where people don't ask for help because of like, oh, I got this. Like I'll live that up by myself. I don't need anybody's help. And then you end up doing it alone. You're like, gosh, this sucks. 
So the fourth and final lesson, I put get the lumber where it needs to be, and in some cases that's a sawmill. Um, in my case, it would be like get it safely on the ground. That's what people are worried about. They want a safe evaluation of their trees. Um, and the way that this relates to life, I think, is like what matters. Yes, the journey matters to accomplishing things, but yeah, the end. You have to get to the end goal. It's the end goal that matters. So like. At Virginia Tech, we take classes sometimes that are really fun, and other times we take classes that challenge us a lot. And in the middle of it, you're like, gosh, why am I doing this? Or should I switch majors? Or should I take different classes? And you have to keep in mind that the end goal is to get, your, get yourself where you need to be or get the lumber where you need to be. So there's an alternative approach to four things that trees have taught us. Being safe all the time, which applies to life too. Why do you wear a bicycle helmet? They don't look cool. You wear them to protect yourself. Um, not stopping, never stopping growing. Never working alone and not being afraid to ask for help. And then lastly, getting the job done. So, is there any questions I can answer? Right. Yeah, thank you.